In Singapore, thousands die every year from cardiac arrest and out-of-hospital survival rates are below 13.8% because those around them don't perform CPR in time. While bystander CPR is known to increase victim survival rates by up to three times, Singapore's bystander CPR rate stands at a low 3.2% as compared to other developed countries with rates over 26%. Harry! Harry! Guys! What would you do? Despite numerous attempts in educating the public, there has been barely an increase in bystander CPR rates for the past 10 years. Most of them were focused on encouraging CPR training and awareness. However, clearly that is not the only problem. Research have cited a lack of confidence as the most important barrier. No, he's just as mobile. What? I don't think it's a good idea, we might get in trouble. Jess, give me the mobile. No, we'll wait for his mum. She'll be back in five no, minutes. No, have to do it. It's just like in school. Come on. Many local campaigns did not practice targeted communications. And we observed that young adults are one particular group that has not been reached. Statistics show that 70% of out-of-hospital cardiac arrests happen at home and half occur in people under 60. Since most young adults still live at home with their parents, they should be ready to perform CPR in an emergency. Wait, no, stop. You don't know what you're doing. You might break his ribs. <laughs> Our primary research affirmed that young adults lack the self-efficacy to perform CPR because they do not know what an emergency feels like in real life. We need a way to make people experience a real emergency without the actual risk involved. to do it! <laughs> Are you ready to enter a virtual reality? Lifesaver is a crisis simulator which fuses interactivity and live action film to guide users through the life-saving process. We made eight participants go through the simulation. Two groups of two males and two females. One group had undergone prior CPR training, while the other had no prior training. Shock delivered. Harry? Harry? Can you hear me? Start CPR. Through our experiment, we found that the simulation successfully increased the self-efficacy of all our participants. Many of them found that the simulation helped them relate to an actual situation and therefore increased their self-efficacy to perform. You really feel like you're doing it. I know better now than before. However, we also found out that intention to perform CPR only increased in the trained participants. Untrained participants were still unwilling to perform bystander CPR. It doesn't mean I can do CPR on a real person. I'll still be scared. The VR simulation was more effective in increasing behavioural intention among trained participants. They felt that the simulation helped them refresh their skills and hence increase their confidence and intention to perform. All trained participants mentioned that it was a good refresher course. In an emergency, I will do what I just did. I think it was a good refresher. 9 upon 10. <sighs> Harry! Eight. Harry! Wait, he, he's, he's come, on, come on, come on! Come on, can you hear me? Harry! Relevant authorities can consider using VR as a more cost-effective CPR refresher course. In fact, the Singapore Heart Foundation has announced plans for a CPR VR app next year to refresh CPR knowledge and skills among people with prior training. However, there are some points to consider. Some people might be adverse to the VR medium, like one of our participants 
who wanted to reject the medium before even receiving our message. Hence, while VR may be a novel technology, campaigners might wish to consider VR as just one of the mediums in a multi-pronged approach instead of a standalone activity. We believe that this is an important issue because there's a chance anyone can save a life. Okay, you've got a good strong pulse. And he's responding. You did it. You did it. You've done a good job. Well done. Thanks. Shock delivered.